G'day, welcome back again. So today uh, we're going to continue on with our series on um, different uh, knives uh, for different jobs. So we've already looked at the slicing knife, the steak knife, and today we're going to look at the boning knife. So what we need to understand is once we got an understanding of the um, basic technical aspect of sharpening a knife, rubbing it back, um, creating a burr and polishing the edge. Um, then we just need to understand different geometries, the blade, how we set them up for different jobs. So if we took our slicing knife uh, that we did in a previous video and tried to bone with it, what would happen firstly the knife would be very biting on the bone because we've got no shoulder there, very thin. So we're going to be using a lot more energy than we need to pushing the knife because it's going to be biting into the bone um, and it eventually will chip and destroy itself because it's, it's too thin for that job. It may be okay for certain boning jobs like on a hind quarter if you're just separating the butt um, where it's more seaming work rather than on the bone. Um, but if we want to have a, if we're going to be a boner, we're better off having a dedicated knife set up, especially for boning. So we're going to explain what we need to do to set a boning knife up. We're going to go through, we'll sharpen it and hopefully uh, you'll get an idea of what we've got to do to get this knife set up for boning. So I've got a little cross section of our slicing knife here. You can see it's super thin, um, so it penetrates the meat. And I was pen opening my fingers up there effortlessly. It's hollow ground, very thin, very little shoulder. And we can see when we run it along our little femur bone here, as soon as it's lifted up any um, it just wants to bite straight into the straight into the bone. So you can see all the extra effort it's going to take to push this knife because it's biting into the bone. Now, boning knife cross section. We've got our two shoulders on the knife there and the edge, and we can see on our little femur bone. This shoulder there is holding the edge up off the bone, so it just glides along with no effort. And we can lift lift the back of that knife up, and it's still still not wanting to bite into the bone because we've got that built-in little shoulder just holding it up off the off the bone. So as you can see, by having this extra shoulder on the knife, that's why when you watch. A very good boner. He effort, effortlessly goes, especially on rib cage or something. Just ease the knife just glides on the bone. It's because that shoulder got that shoulder holding the edge off the bone, and it enables him to glide or go over a bowl or something. Just does it with ease. Try and do it with a slicing knife. Just bite, 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 and you're pushing. Um, and using all that extra energy and your knife doesn't last long. So we need to add that extra step when we sharpen it to create this shoulder. Now as with anything there's more than one way to skin a cat. Uh, this is one way today we'll look at put this shoulder on the knife um, then in another video, uh, we'll look at it, another way of doing it. Okay, so we've got a little uh, Mora semi-flex 5-inch boning knife here. We're going to, we still need to rub it flat, like in the slicing knife. So we still need, it will, the knife will still get thick as it wears. So we still need to do that maintenance. We need to add another step on top of what we did when we sharpened the slicing knife before. So what I've done, I've blackened the blade just with some texture, just to help show 
where we need to rub. So we're going to do our maintenance step up first. So we're going to rub it flat. So I've got it flat on the stone. Okay. So, so you can see where the uh, text has been rubbed off there. So about halfway up the blade. So the higher we can get that scratch pattern on the blade, the better for this step. So we've got about halfway. You can get um, three quarters of the way up. Uh, it's probably a bit better. Okay, so we've done our maintenance step. We've rubbed it, removed some metal off the sides of the knife, thin it out. So this is where we're going to add our um, extra shoulder into the step. Uh, before we would have, on the slicing knife, we would have rubbed it flat and then we would have went straight on to the sharpening. So this is, so we're going to add this in now. So we want to put it on the stone flat and we want to we want to pick the knife up approximately about 15 degrees. So we're going to, we'll be sharpening it at 25 degrees. So we want it less than what we're going to sharpen it at. So we're going to rub that, that bevel in or shoulder into it. Both sides. So we can see uh, with the blackened blade there, so that bevel um, sort of you can see the where it's rubbed to uh, rub the texture off five mil or so up the blade compared to when we rubbed it flat that um, sort of went right up the halfway. Okay, so now we've created that extra shoulder on the knife we just go ahead now and sharpen it exactly the same as we would any other knife put in a clamp lock it in start on our 400 Uh, you can either, some people go up to 30 degrees for the boning knife, try 25, um, we find that still by adding that, because we put a bit of shoulder into it on that stone, uh, 25 degrees seems to work well. So again, just going to go up and back counting how many times on the slicing knife. We we're doing about four times up and back to get that burr. Um, the boning knife, we're going to give it a little bit more strength there and probably go six. Okay, got a good burr. Turn it over. Same again on this side. Okay, that's six. Got a good burr. 
Going to alternate now from side to side. Take the burr off. And now, just like our other knife, it's just a matter of going through the finer and finer grits. and polishing that edge out. So again, for the boning knife, we want a really highly polished edge, uh, for, especially when it's been chilled for cold boning, highly polished. So now we're on the 600, and we just alternate from side to side. Okay, 1200, move the grip, keep your knife clean. Super light, don't need to be pushing, pushing hard on it. The lighter pressure the better. Especially when you're using something like a semi-flex or even a flexible knife. Okay, drag it down a piece of plastic to help drag Near that burr and rubbish that might be hanging on the edge. Okay, onto our white Spyderco. Clean. Drag it down the plastic. And just like we did previously on this stone here, really, really want to polish it. So I'm doing circles up and back, just really scrubbing it super light. Trying to tip that knife over, trying to keep the weight off it as much as we can so it's super light. Finish off with some super light strokes. Okay, test it, save it a bite. Bites into that straight away. Not skidding along it. Smooth. There's no chips or dings in it. So I would call that I would call that sharp. Okay. So there you have it. So we didn't go into a lot of depth on why we raise a burr. And what we're doing here, have a look at some of the earlier videos we did um, that went more into depth of the whys of uh, getting a burr. So basically, 
we want to be rubbing it flat, picking it up about 10, 15 degrees, putting a shoulder on the knife, both sides, and then coming in with our sharpener and honing that edge to a high polish. And we need to remember by doing this, the knife can get thick really quick. So it's important, don't forget to keep that knife thinned out by rubbing it flat. Okay, so there you have it, the boning knife. Got any comments, put a comment in down below. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like that. And uh, keep an eye out and we'll keep these videos coming. Thanks very much.